So let's do that. So we start from a tridiagonal E minus H, like this. This is our matrix. And what we have is on the, on the left up here, we want to fold in the self energy like this. So we want to isolate this whole point where we con concatenated basically the whole semi-infinite left contact into a single self energy. Now we have a sigma here. So from the previous slide, that was no sigma. And if we include a sigma, we basically included the whole semi-infinite contact on the left. So let's forget about the distinction between sigmas on the diagonal, etc. We just write them as here are diagonal matrix elements and here are off-diagonal matrix elements. And we want to solve this matrix GR equal 1. So to get the left connected green function, we just start with this block and we take the inverse that gives us a G0. And we do the same from the right and it gives us a GR on the right. So let's do that. We'll, we have a GR that's only connected to the semi-infinite lead going to the left. So now we say, well, that GR is connected with some T's to the next matrix element. We can compute it with a, this RGF algorithm where we can get the G that's now connected to the semi-infinite lead to the left plus one matrix element by this expression. Then we can expand this Hamiltonian further and make it a little bit bigger. We can get G that's now connected to the semi-infinite lead up to side two. Then side three, then side four, and obviously you can generalize that. Where now you see that you have a diagonal matrix element hopping G to the left from before and hopping. So in a sense to get from side I minus one you are connected to, in addition to, side i on the left and side i on the right, and you have a diagonal matrix element i, you take the inverse, that gives you a g i i that is now derived from a g i minus one i minus one. You can do the same thing and march through the whole structure and connect to the right. Then, if you do that for the very last side, this is, last block is special. It is right connected already. It's the right collected solution. That means you have obtained, if you marched all the way down here, you've obtained one true block of GR. That's the one matrix block that is the true inverse <coughs> block. All right, so let's assume you have that block and now you want to find the true inverses of these diagonals. So now you do the other way around. You have a true inverse and you have all your left connected green functions. So here's left connected on n minus 2, n minus 2. And you have matrix elements that connect you back. There's a recursion you can write down that looks like this. Where if you want to get the truly connected n minus 2, n minus 2, you start from the n minus 2, n minus 2 left connected one and connected through a hopping from this guy to this guy and back plus one and that connects gets you this G. Um, this you can generalize and you can start to migrate all the way back. It's hard to see on this background here. So the interesting part is that the forward recursion you end up having to do a full inverse of a block but it's only of the size of a block versus this is only matrix multiplies, which is very simple. Scale, so this scales, this is why RGF scales as block sized cubed, because this is the dominating factor. So this way you can march down and march back up, and uh, you include uh, the inverses of these blocks, and this is why the scales as n times block cubed. This guy, includes the simple block multiplication, so it only it scales as n times block square, which is negligible in typical cases. So it's a little bit for, slower by a factor of 10 by 40, uh, 10 to 40 if um, 
If your block size is 10 to 40. All right, so here are the general expressions to get diagonal uh, matrix elements of the inverse. So if you ever only wanted to know what the inverses, the true inverses of a block tridiagonal matrix are, this is the fastest method known to man right now to get these inverses. All right, now then, if we only need the current, we need this one diagonal block. So we march not to the very end, we just march to here, and we march up from below to this point, and we get that matrix element, and we can calculate the current. Now if we need to get these blocks here that also have the non-equilibrium charge, we march down, we march back up, we march to that point over here, and then we can march out into the uh, uh, into the off-diagonal matrix elements. And the way you do that is you start out from a, a fully connected green function and you have a left connected green function and with that these two matrix elements you can compute off-diagonal matrix elements. If you have one off-diagonal matrix element and another diagonal one you can compute this next guy. If you have one guy you can compute this guy and the next guy. And you can basically march out on the diagonal. And you only do that with very simple matrix multiplies, no inverses. So these are the routes. So you start from a diagonal. You need all the diagonal left connected ones. And that allows you to march out onto a column or a row of that matrix. Of course, you can do the same thing from the left, just like from the right. Just the indices are slightly different. And that is how you can compute selectively just a few elements into that inverse of the matrix. Okay. So that being said, hello? Oh, okay. So again, this operation count here is, that's the beautiful part, it's n times block cubed. That's an order n algorithm in principle compared to an order n cubed algorithm if you just went into MATLAB and typed inverse of that matrix. And here are the equations that you need uh, to then solve charge and current. So if you only want current, you only need GRII. And if you want charge and current, you need some rows of off-diagonal matrix elements and you sum those up in the non-equilibrium region. So here's the, if you want to do this in general for block uh, matrices, uh, block tridiagonal matrices, here's the summary of the equations. Make sure you write down every i and j and plus one appropriately. All right. So that should give you an, at least a little bit of an intuitive overview, if not the detailed math of how this works. Everything is clear as mud. <laughs> so just imagine I had started out my lectures with this. <laughs> All right? I mean, you're only really going to do this and understand it if you actually do it, if you start to sit down and code it and look at the math carefully. This is not stuff you can teach and in some way say, oh, this is very clean. Okay? The equations are all there. They're defined. They're in the lecture notes, so you can, you can get them. Uh, the advice is, if you use MATLAB and you type Ike of H, you're wasting a lot of your, your time and a lot of uh, energy on your computer. Okay? Or actually inverse of, inverse of H. Okay? okay? Everything clear? Okay.